Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for... And when Jesus sent his disciples to cross the Sea of Galilee to meet him on the other side, they willingly took off and readily took off. They didn't delay, they obeyed right on the button. But in the midst of the obedience, which was at midnight, the storm arose. A storm arose. A wilderness experience came. Oh yeah, that's when you are tested. Oh yeah, that's when you say a worshiper is a worshiper is a worshiper until the storm started to get wilder. But what was good about those guys, they never jumped out of the boat. But Mr. Peter, the worshiper, he challenged Jesus out there. If that is you, tell me, come. Worshippers do things that others are still there wondering. What craziness is that? Well, my thing is, look at Peter. The wind is getting wilder. The ship looking like it's going to sink. Those guys are, are no help to you anyway. The worshiper takes the plunge. Ah, uh, Jesus. When do you sing your song? When do you take the plunge to sing your song in the wilderness? Check that out. I invite you today, not just to watch this as another program that comes up on television, or another installment of Divine Destiny's uh, It's Your Date with Destiny. Today, I am challenging you Take up the mantle of the worshiper and start to sing your song wherever you are in the name of Jesus. I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan. Good morning. On behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, I invite you, I welcome you to It's Your Date with Destiny, the television arm of our media ministry. And today we're going right into the message. I know it's going to be powerful. Last week I know you were hit. That angel hit somebody. I know that. We, we were here doing the, the, the filming and the guys behind the camera could have felt it. And I know you got your shot. Amen. Who knows what the Lord will do this week. So call up someone. Just let that person know there's a powerful revelation under the theme, a worshiper is a worshiper is a worshiper. Just tell them, you never heard Psalm 63 like that before. You need to listen to Apostle Vivian Duncan as he ministers this word. Amen? So call 633-3780 while we are on the air. Somebody could minister to you. If you don't get them right now, you can call on Sunday morning or definitely from Monday to Friday between 10 and 5. And the same word you will get. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And your soul is your emotion. Your soul represents your sentiments. Your soul represents your feelings. And David says, I'm practicing for heaven. So while I'm on the earth, my body not going to get in the way. While I'm on the earth, I have targeted the one who loved me before I loved him. I've targeted the one who has brought me into his banqueting house. I've targeted and I've, I, I, can, I can see him. He is the one I'm going after. So I'm not going to study my body at times being tired, my, my mind, uh, my, 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 my feet, my whatever, at times being tired. He said, I'll keep on playing that harp because it's my soul touching God, my soul touching Jesus. You, you, see, you see, I know people say, oh, it should be your spirit. But I have news for you, your spirit has no choice because your spirit is a little piece of God. When you decide, oh, Shataraba, I have many other things I'll do, but I choose to worship. 
I choose to lift up your name. I choose to come after you. Lord, I could be home uh, talking to my sister overseas, but I want to talk to you in heaven. So I want to come with the rest of the saints. My God. Lord, everything that's me, because me doesn't only consist of my, what people could see. It's the inner me I want to give to you. So David says, my soul. Now, 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 I want us to go into a little deeper thinking. Now, what is the function of your emotions? What is the function of the inner man? What is the, 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 the essence of your being as is uh, uh, presented by the inner man? Right, I'm so glad you asked. Let me answer you. It's your character. It's your persona. It's who you are. Who you are is not just your body. In fact, far from it, your body just follows the instructions from inside your soul. So when I say, God, my soul followed hard after you. I'm saying, God, I'm coming after you so that my character can be shaped like yours. Did you just say that? Yeah. And that's why we, I, I, I told you uh, 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 the last time we, we, we ministered on the moving from, church, from religion to church to kingdom. John 1, 12 is so pivotal. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. And we thought, uh, the, 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 the traditional thinking is that they didn't receive Jesus, the individual. So they killed him. But what they were really incensed about and what they could not handle was the character of Jesus. This passion that Jesus had for his father. This passion that Jesus had for upgrading his thinking and other people's thinking as to who this God really is. Because Jesus came in and he took their old philosophies apart. He ripped it apart. You have heard it said, but now I say. He said, this is what religious people would do, but this is what kingdom people would do. And it dawned on me uh, uh, today that, that Jesus, well, representing God, displayed for us the character that is of such a level that we must now do like David and develop a passion for being like Jesus. I must find out what is the character of Jesus. I must find, I must find out what made Jesus tick. I must find out what made Jesus so appealing even to lawyers and rich men and, and, and women who had been delivered. What made them come after Jesus? What made guys who, who were Pharisees come by night to talk to him? What made them defy the rules of their sect to come and say, Jesus, what going on with you? How are you like this? You the, you, you're the first person I see like this. Yes, I have had Pharisees and rabbis and all of them in my life, but none of them do it like you. How do I get like you? Many could not make it because they, they, they had a desire, but it was not a hard one. Because when it's a hard passion, when it's a high-level passion, it doesn't matter what demands God make of you, you will go after him. So when he checked Nicodemus, Nicodemus came up with all his legal arguments. Uh, so, uh, I want to join you, Jesus. What do I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, well, simple thing. Just be born again. Wow. Wow, born again, where's that? Start to go back inside my mother's womb. 
Biologically, that doesn't work. Scientifically, that can't work. Once you go in there and you come out, you can't go back in. So he, he, he started to argue with Jesus concerning his scientific knowledge. Jesus said, you so dunce, you don't even know how dunce you are. He said, boy, it's not a going back in the mother's womb to be born again. It's all about being regenerated. Regenerated, your, your, your whole gene system, your genetic system will be changed from being fed by human knowledge and human uh, uh, information to now being hooked up to the DNA of God. He said, and the, sim, the symbolic declaration of that is going in the water and get baptized. He said, that is being born again. He said, well, he, he certainly had more here than this. Uh, I'll come again. But you know he went away. Nicodemus went away, mulling over what Jesus said. And he was convinced eventually. His soul began to follow after Jesus. How we know that? When was time to bury Jesus? One of the men in the contingent that carried his casket, well, near casket, was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was right there watching the, the um, the, 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 the crucifixion, and he helped carry Jesus' body to the, 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 the tomb of Joseph. Then came another guy. He said, Jesus, I like how you're moving, man. I like it. I really love this. Yeah, I, I think I could hang with you for a while. Jesus said, really? And he wanted to convince Jesus that his soul is going after, after him. Jesus said, hear what? We're going to wait here a while for you. Just go back home and sell everything that you have. He said, what? He said, that is, that, that is me. That is my life, Jesus. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mm. All right. We can pick up at Jesus. I really admire anything but to sell out all my goods just to follow you. Mm -mm. Then they came. They came. These people in John 6 they, they, to, to, to follow Jesus because they heard he had done bread and fish, fast food, McDonald's special, Subway. They, they heard you could come to a convention with Jesus, don't bring no food, don't pay, don't pay no entrance fee. But you show for a big lunch. <laughs> so, so, so Jesus said, so you're coming after me, you're running after me, you're following hard after me for another bread and fish? He said, yeah, what? Kitchen closed. Let me take you by the abattoir. Raw meat. And he took them there. And he said, hello, hello. from now on, anybody want to follow me, they have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. A Jew, you telling that? Jew only know about kosher. You had to make sure all the blood drain out before you cut up the meat. So they say, what? Jesus, hear what? Uh, we, we change our mind. Because by the time you get to John 6, 64, 65, it says, and many turned away. So I want you to understand that when David says, I'm following him by my soul. When he says, my, my soul follows hard after you. Following God. The telltale sign must be character change. I'll say it again. If you are talking about following God, and I, and I wish the hard part yet. I wish following hard yet. Because it's get hard sometimes. And sometimes harder. In fact, sometimes following God is the hardest. But at the end of it, you become the hardest. You become so hard that people who try, who used to control your, your mind and your mood a long time, they can't do it again. Yeah. Now when they come, you do like the donkey. Huh? You shake it off, stamp on it, and you rise. Stand here to tell God, thank you. I, I'm still celebrating. I celebrated my 50th birthday yesterday. Woo! Hallelujah. Bless God. And I want to <laughs> really, really tell God 
it's turning around. That's right. For me. I really want to say thank you because when I think about the processing, here I am to worship. Amen. And here I am to bow down. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Karen Prince. I am, um, well, I've visited here more than once, but I am a happy parent today. And um, pa Apostle, good night, Apostle, good night. Um, one night when I was here, I was invited to all night prayer with the yellow jerseys and stuff. And um, I think, we were, I don't know what we were, but it was a big thing that you all had and I was invited by one of the sisters here. And I came here and was so burdened. And while I was in the service and stuff, you know how a child would go to a parent and fall down and cry and play. In my heart, I wanted to run to Apostle and just throw myself and just ball, ball, ball and cry. Don't that you could have. To do it, sister. Right. Yeah. And for you just to, just to say, it's all right, it's all right. But so much for that, I am really, really happy. Um, I came at my home with uh, um, Deacon Julian and Mrs. Julian. Oh, okay. Oh. Right. Up that side. And uh, we were, yes. Yeah. And you were at my home. And. Uh, my husband was not there, and we were all in the yard, and we was all excited about this pool. But before you leave, you said you wanted to pray for me. The word that you prayed is, was that in the year 2013, 14, and 15, people would be sending your children away. They would be giving you lots of money, and they would send in your children away. So, this is the year 2015. The year 2013... Because of my daughter's grade, she's now 16. My sister-in-law is paying for her to go lessons in a big school in Shagornas. Okay. My husband have to take her to Shagornas every Sunday, Saturday morning to lessons. A son got a scholarship, a puzzle, to Berkeley School of hey, Music. music. Hey. And I have no money. But God is but so God, good. Jesus. God is so good. We got his tuition. We are at a brink now. He hasn't got his visa yet, but we are getting his dorms money. Wow. People are calling. Doors are being open. And my husband, he's on two years leave. He has the time. Pastor or Apostle always said, he said to me the night, your husband will find the rightful place in his home. I am walking around the savannah with my head up, Sister Gemma, nobody does know how hard it could be with the love for your family. But I prayed, I prayed like I never prayed before. And I see the hands of God on my son. When my son go to Boston, there is no one up there. But you know what? He is going. Because the word, I hold on to that word that my son would be going abroad to Berkeley School of Music. Testimony, I have to read this one. This sister, she came here just before she went on a diplomatic appointment. That's since 20, somewhere around 2010 around there. And fell sick. Came back to Trinidad. I mean, totally under the weather. But you know what? Hear, hear, hear what she says. Apostle Duncan, I just want to let you know that I am doing well and have returned to work at the Ministry of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs. That's where she was working. She was in Washington. But you know what? She was there when Patrice was there. We needed somebody like that to work with Patrice. Then she got sick. But she's now back on the job. Tell her neighbor that means she healed. All right. And she, she said, I went back on Monday, the 5th October. That is last week. I wish to convey, no, that's this Monday here. I wish to convey my warmest and deepest appreciation to you and through you to Sister Doreen, Yolan, Anna, Susan, and the entire Divine Destiny Worship Center ministry. You, led, you fed me spiritually via the internet every Sunday every Friday she must be viewing us now I won't call her name but I know she's viewing us now she said in 2013 you prayed for me 
And since then, well, uh, some of the sisters have been going and bring, giving communion to her. Since I met you in August 2009, you graciously allowed me to come under the cover of your ministry, even though I'm not yet a member. I like that, not yet a member. Come on down. Right, come on home. Come home. Amen. And that has contributed greatly to my restoration and spiritual growth. I'm not driving as yet, but as soon as I can arrange transport on a Sunday morning, I will come to express my appreciation. I thank God for you. All your books and CDs and the Di Divine Destiny Worship Center all the time for everything that I have gained from your ministry. Highest regards. Come on, somebody give God. Destiny anointing oil. I'm going to anoint my hands again with this oil and I'm stretching forth my hands. I want you to stretch your hands forth as well because this anointing today is for somebody who is just about to make a stupid decision that could mess up your life and other people's lives. Amen? And I said stupid decision because you are thinking with your heart and not with your head. You need to think with your head. Be practical. Do not let the emotions of this situation, and I'm hearing the Lord saying, it's about marriage. And not just about marriage, it's about someone also want to leave home and go live with that guy. You have seen what he has done with you. Almost rearrange your face the last time with a, with a slap and a, and a good fist in your face and you want to run away and go live with that person. I rebuke that vagrant spirit. I rebuke that, as we say in Trinidad, that bubbly spirit. I rebuke that spirit that makes you feel you are not worth anything so you could take any kind of treatment and still run after the person. I rebuke it. I say stop your running now in the name of Jesus. I declare God will lasso your foot. You're not going out there. You're not going to do that. And neither are that one walking up the aisles. You are not going to walk up the aisles with that person who you know is no good for you. Your mother told you and you ought to have listened. I rebuke that spirit. I anoint my hands already and I release that anointing into your heart and into your soul. You are set free right now. You're going to give God thanks for this later. Amen? Good. Well, here we are at the very end of the month of October 2015. You know my usual challenge. What have you been doing with the resolution you made 10 months ago on All Year's Night 2014 into New Year's morning 2015? Have you started writing the book? Did you do the poems? Did you start the bakery? Did you start the course? Or did you start the course and dropped out? Huh? Are you a finisher? Yes, you are. So I'm releasing a finisher's anointing upon you right now. Receive it. You've got two more months, November and December. Many things can be done in two months. L write up your list of priorities and tackle a little one first. It's, it's something about, uh, about finishing. Even though it's a little thing that you spent an hour behind, but you finished it, it creates a greater desire to finish the bigger things. I release it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. This weekend again, this is our, 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 our powerful weekend of services. We have our service uh, this Sunday morning, the 1st of November at nine o'clock and, and do you know so, this Sunday it is Apostle Gemma's birthday. Woo! Yoo Yoo Apostle Gemma's birthday and you know at Divine Destiny Worship Center there's a lot of celebration when it comes to birthdays. Uh, we don't know which one we don't know which one carries carries more um, fire. But before I, before I go any further and put myself in trouble, I just want you to know the 24th of August is also a celebration. But this one is the 1st of November, Apostle Gemma's birthday. Amen. That's a good day to come and worship with us here at Divine Destiny Worship Center to whip up some thanksgiving to God for our apostle, Apostle Gemma, my wife, our children's mother, and so on. Amen. So we are at nine in all our branches, right across Trinidad and Tobago, and up the islands, up in 
Antigua at the corner of High Street and Market Street, Harper's Building, Unit 2. Amen. Get there for nine. Same anointed. Amen. And those who are in Dominica, you are in Dominica Salt Ministry at River Street, I think it's number 62, River Street. You'll meet um, Pastor Jody and that bunch of crazy worshipers. Amen. It's, it's just awesome what God is doing right now. Amen. And uh, on Monday, we have radio program, 9 o'clock. It's your date with destiny, 98.1. Tuesday, we have radio program, uh, 107.1. It's uh, living the more abundant life. On Friday, 3 p.m., uh, ask Pastor Gemma on 98.1. The rest of the week, we have services on Tuesday, deliverance service, 5.30, live stream. And on Friday, deliverance service, live stream. On Wednesday, we have a lunchtime service beginning at 11. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want to get caught up in the old talk at work? Just come across the Divine Destiny at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. And a word is there waiting for you in Diego Martin, that is. Amen. And also at our branches every Thursday, we have deliverance service. Oh, so you, 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 you don't have to lament, oh, where can I get deliverance? Where somebody could prophesy or pray, to, pray for me. It's everywhere every day at Divine Destiny Worship Center. Amen. And our book of the month is When Destiny Calls. You need to get your copy of it. When Destiny Calls. What happens to a person when he says, she says, yes, Lord, I'll do it. You wake up the hordes of hell. You wake up, uh, I mean, agents, human agents of hell that want to stop you. But a man of destiny, a woman of destiny, cannot be stopped. We have a saying at Divine Destiny, I'm on my way to the top, and I cannot be stopped. And I prophesy the same to you. So until we meet again, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan, and we have my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center declaring to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You're a good idea because when God made you, he had destiny on his Mind. Did I say we are the house of champions? Yes, we are the house of champions. Amen. God bless you. As you continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ, this has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.